What a week with the election, hey? And there are so many takeaways from it that we cannot just pass by and not talk about it. So this is what we're going to look at today because what I have observed, observed with the Kamala and Trump campaign is exactly what I observe at organizations. So if you are in HR, if you are a manager or a leader, hit the subscribe button because HR doesn't have to be that difficult. I'm Sylvia, an organizational psychologist, and I talk about everything and anything related to human resources and human experiences. I like to talk about uh, human experiences, but through observation. And follow me I and comment. Please comment below and tell me what is it that you want me to talk about because I literally, I can't run out of topics, but I would like to talk about things that is important for you or you, something you are struggling with. And I promise you that HR is not that difficult. And it also only becomes difficult when we pull a Kamala Harris campaign at work. <laughs> yes, I said it. Yes, I said it. And this is what we are going to talk about because the parallel behaviors that I have observed, it was just so striking. So I think the takeaway, the main takeaway is if you don't listen to your people, you are going to lose them. And this is what the Kamala campaign did. They did not listen to what the people want, don't want, need, don't need, what frustrates them, what is it that they are struggling with, what is important to them, what is not important to them etc etc and i'm going to give you some examples related to the workplace because we pull the same stunt at work and i keep talking to leaders and hr about it you're gonna invest all your resources today i saw that the kamala campaign is 20 million in a, in 20 dollars 20 million dollars debt and they had one billion dollar to spend on the campaign and they didn't win why? Because they fail to listen to their people, to the people they serve. So the number one lesson, really, whether you are a HR leader, you are leading people, managing people, is the number one lesson is listen to your people. Don't just come up with agendas. Don't just come up with narratives. Don't just come up with ideas, activities, plans for the workforce without asking them or knowing if they would like to have that. Now, Trump, regardless of your political opinion here, I'm not taking two things I don't do and one of them is politics, but it's, it was beautiful to observe. Trump, on the other hand, and his team, obviously, they paid attention to the, what the people were saying, the average American, right? And they identified, okay, they are not interested in this topic. They are fed up with this. They are pissed off about that. They don't need this. They want this. They are struggling with this. These are the things that are important to them. And they push that message. They double down on those. Now, how they're going to execute is a different thing. But that was the message. And that's why they turned so many people um, to their side. And nothing saved Kamala because she was talking, pushing a message that was rejected and not well received. And how we do that at work is, and this is the same thing that we do at work, but how we do that is, is you can clearly see. So sometimes we talked about it in previous videos, right? Sometimes we have the um the high, the high score on engagement surveys yet the employees are you know not very happy because we are measuring the wrong wrong thing because we did not listen to them uh, many times look at the hr um, implementations right so paternity leave is the uptake is extremely low nobody wants it now i'm not saying to take it away because it's, it caters for a very small population and probably they need it. So leave it there. But just know that because you put that in place and you put it in your EVP, it's not going to make a difference for 99% of the workforce. So these are the things that Kamala Harris made a mistake with. She was talking to the minority and ignored the majority. 
She was pushing messages that was appealing to a small group of people and ignored everybody else because, and I come to that in, a, in, in, in the next point, why, why that happens, right? And we do that with these employee helplines, right? These uh, employee help uh, programs, uptake below 2%. So, and then HR say, yes, but we provide mental health services, access to this, access to that, because these programs are massive. They have, you, they give you access to financial advisor and all that kind of things. They are fantastic. Yet the uptake is below 2% in any companies I talk to. So it doesn't mean we take it away. Maybe we should, uh, depending on the cost, that's up for looking at the data and all that. But once again, it caters for a small number of people, but then we would think, oh, but we have everything in place, so people should be happy. Well, they are not, because they don't need it. They don't want it. It's not the priority for them. It's not important to them. We don't know why. And this is where we need to go into organizations or back to the people and ask them, we have this program. Do you guys want it? Why don't you want it? Maybe they are not aware of it. We, we don't know. So, and HR is always surprised. Oh, we have so many things in place, yet people are not happy. Well, because you did not ask them. <laughs> and you did not listen to them. And you didn't communicate. And I will tell you the solution. So, and the other reason why that happens, this misalignment between the leader, what the agenda they're pushing or the message they want to push down or the, in, the, the interventions they offer or programs to the workforce is because what Kamala did, she was way too occupied by Trump. She was focusing on the wrong thing. And we all get, I think we are all guilty at those. I can get so caught up with, I'm going to prove you wrong, rather than doing what's best for the business or the, or the, or the people in this case. Um, and she was so focused on Trump that at some point, you know, it, it, it gets funny and okay, we all like a little bit of a back and forth, but that's okay, it's enough because that's not what, what is important. And HR is doing the same thing. And I have talked about it many times. HR is too busy with what the industry is telling them they're supposed to do. HR is too busy what other HR professionals are telling them what they're supposed to do, what tools they should have, what, what programs they should have, what the workforce need, instead of ignoring everyone, everybody for now, go to the workforce, what do you, my people and my business need, and then you go back to the market and then you find the programs and the tools that will allow that for you, allow you to cater for your people and your business. So we need to turn this around because what we are doing is going out shopping tools and programs and surveys and whatever we are doing, but we haven't checked if the audience is needing it. Um, we haven't checked if this is the priority for the business. We haven't checked if it's the priority or the struggles of the, the workforce. Because if people in the workforce have problems on the daily basis, they can't get the job done, etc., etc., you can offer any kind of HR programs. First things first, right? So you really need to look at what your people need and then you go out and find the solution rather than the other way around. Here is a solution because I like the system because the latest Gartner report told me or the, the you know, uh, what a CIP or whoever or the every company is doing it. So I know I need to do that. Absolutely not. And this is where we are wasting money and time and resources because we are investing everything into things that maybe people don't want. And that's what these indicators are showing, right? Because people are now happy despite billions being pumped into employee well-being, happiness and, and, and all that. So it's, it's really a misalignment. It's not that people don't work hard. HR people are going, you know, um, working really, really hard. 
but without listening to the workforce. And that's what I always say. And you can see that if you go to Populace, they have workforce index, um, private opinion and public opinion surveys. So they are surveying people and the workforce in two different ways, public opinion and private. And they are always different. And that's the greatest indicator for HR and business leaders. Don't listen to the consensus. Don't listen to the noise. And this is what probably the Kamala campaign made a mistake with. They were surrounded, that they surrounded themselves with their liberals. Is it liberal? You see, I'm not politician. Are they the liberals? If it's not, then the other one. They surrounded themselves with liberals who push the same, they run on the same algorithm. And that's the problem with algorithm. You go on TikTok, they're pushing the same message. So there was nobody there to tell them, hey, this is not the room, the temperature of the room. So of course they were blindly walking into an election that was 100% to be lost. And I spoke to my American friends and they said, if they actually just came out on the street and went for a burger, they could have sensed that, that what was happening, but they didn't. So when you, don't, when you listen to certain people, you are blind to everything. Now you have to listen to everyone, right? But in what order? What do my people need? And then I'm gonna go and see the other parties as well. Yeah, and what my people is everybody not just my party, my people with the same ideology, the same thinking, the same belief. I like it when HR people tell me that, oh, this, is, this agenda is, you know, it's just throw it in the bin. This way of HR is not doing it. And then I always say, well, why are they saying that? Tell me, tell me more. I, want, I don't go immediately, oh no, this is how we do. And you know, this is the latest trend. Absolutely not. Latest trend is as good as your workforce is receiving it. So, so go to Populace Index and, and they will tell you, they will show you the differences between what people think is important to the workforce collectively. And when you ask them privately, they have very different opinion. For example, everybody organization thinks and the collective thinks that DEI activities are very important. And when you actually look at on the scale, on the ranking of one to 50, DEI ends up in the forties. Nobody cares about it, yet we are pushing it. So that's just an example. Co uh, corporate values, nobody cares about it, yet companies are pushing it. Although now they quiet and that done. So it's always, what is important to my people? And the, re the, the way you can do this is actually very simple. So that's why I always say, HR hey, doesn't have to be that difficult because at the moment it's painful. But the moment we start listening to our employees, and this is where employee experience design comes into the picture, is literally getting the information, measuring every single touch point of employee's journey, and getting the feedback so you can respond and fix policies, procedures, systems, everything that they interact with that is impacting their experiences. So this is when organizations actually listen rather than this is the culture we want, this is what we would like, but maybe that's not what I would like. Maybe that's not what the workforce would like. So you're never going to aim for 100% happiness. That's just impossible. But when you are going for, you know, measuring every single area, it's like maybe 50 touch points, then you have a massive data and then you can create organizations that people like to be at. And then they hear them, then they feel heard and listened to. And then they're going to start following you because the moment you stop listening to your people, you are blind to them and you are deaf to what they have to say, you're going to lose them as your followers. They're not going to follow. They're going to go somewhere else. So I hope that helped. And yes, there are a massive takeaway from this election campaign. If you fail to listen to your people and you surround yourself with the people who think the same way, that's a guaranteed losing the game.